for the last 20 years, I've been studying information theory. Information theory is the theory that's the foundation of um, uh, Silicon Valley, all the information technologies that really are the driving force of economic growth. And uh, studying information theory has led me to the belief that wealth is chiefly knowledge. And uh, this may seem to be counterintuitive, but the Neanderthal in his cave had all the natural resources that we have today. The difference between our age and the Stone Age, as Thomas Sowell pointed out decades ago, is entirely the growth of knowledge. A professor at MIT named Cesar Hidalgo recently uh, gave a good example to help you understand this concept. When an expensive car crashes into a wall, all its value disappears, although every molecule and atom remains. Value is information. The car is knowledge. And uh, I conclude that all wealth is essentially knowledge. And if uh, Wealth is knowledge. What is economic growth? Well, for years and years, I've been studying uh, a phenomenon in business strategy called the learning curve. Sometimes Bain and Company renamed it the experience curve. And it essentially ordains that with every doubling of units, there's a couple seats in the second row, in the third row, there are a couple seats. A lot of room in here and up front. Um, but uh, the learning curve is, learning curves have been calculated by the Boston Consulting Group and by Bain and Company uh, as uh, essentially with every doubling of unit sales, Cost, unit costs drop between 20 and 30 percent. This is the learning curve, and they've been shown to apply to everything from poultry to insurance policies to transistors on chips to codes of software to uh, you name it. Uh, a learning curve applies. And I believe that if growth is knowledge, I mean, if uh, wealth is knowledge, Growth is learning. Now, in order to have learning, there are certain rules apply. Uh, learning is most essentially experimental. If uh, outcomes are guaranteed, uh, learning is essentially prohibited. As Karl Popper explained it, any scientific proposition has to be falsifiable to be meaningful. And the reason capitalism is such an engine of learning and thus an engine of economic growth is because uh, every business plan can fail. Bankruptcy is possible. But if you have government guaranteeing everything uh, by uh, printing money whenever uh, any enterprise is in jeopardy of falsification or bankruptcy, uh, then uh, learning is prohibited. So the very policies that uh, government follows in order to guarantee growth intrinsically thwarts growth by arresting the learning process, by falsifying the learning process. And you get a company like like Tesla, which, uh, you know, is uh, all kinds of brilliant technologists, all sorts of visionary ideas, but it can't really be tested. It's uh, everywhere, all across the country, Tesla is really uh, an arm of, of U.S. 
uh, government control and subsidy. And so it really can't fail unless the policy changes. When, when you invest in a company like Tesla, you're really investing in a belief about American politics rather than uh, a belief in the possibility of, of truly uh, profitable and activities based on a real expansion of knowledge. Thank you.